It's now 28 minutes after the hour of 7 o'clock on this Thursday morning. Welcome back to the Now Morning Show. Now, World Breastfeeding Week uh, runs from August 1st to the 7th. And on August 2nd, there will be an international breastfeeding conference that's actually taking place with the Ministry of Health. And so they are going to be talking things about how women can uh, go about breastfeeding and, of course, how it concerns the workplace to ensure that mothers who breastfeed actually have that support in the workplace. And so joining me is Ms. Thomas, who is the manager of the breastfeeding unit. Good morning. Good morning, Ms. Thomas. Good morning. Thank you for having me this morning. Of course. Now, first of all, let us talk about the benefits of breastfeeding. Uh, what are some of the benefits uh, for the baby if a mother breastfeeds? For the baby, the, the baby is given the complete form of nutrition. All the nu nutrients that the baby needs is contained in breast milk and it is really phenomenal because breast milk changes in composition daily so it it works well in terms as the baby grows all that the baby needs to support it day to day is contained in breast milk and some of those benefits you'll find that baby and mom will really bond from the very minute that the baby is born once we we support what we do call uninterrupted immediate skin to skin contact that is when the baby comes out and is delivered whether cesarean or natural birth the baby can be placed on skin to skin with the mom and it would be wonderful for you to watch the crawl to see the baby actually finds that breast and begin to initiate breastfeeding and so the bonding starts there as well as the whole immune support because baby gets their immunity from mothers for the first few months of life but Breast milk, especially colostrum, which you get in the first um, 72 hours or more, is really what we call the baby's first vaccine. Mm -hmm. So it builds the immunity for the baby and prevents illnesses. So you'll find that babies who are exclusively breastfed, especially, and then continuing in the long term, have fewer visits to the doctor, fewer visits to the emergency room. You have a reduction in the risk for um, non-communicable diseases. And you see things like childhood obesity, high blood pressure, diabetes. Um, those risks are reduced as well as gastrointestinal diseases. And we have a very great benefit that all parents should look forward to is that babies who are breastfed in the long term have a higher IQ. Now, I want to pause on the long-term breastfeeding because I know there's an argument. For example, some women will wean their baby off of the breast milk, let's say, at, at, at three weeks. And then there are some mothers who may still breastfeed up to four years. So is there a cutoff point for parents when they're breastfeeding? Well, we support breastfeeding exclusively for the first six months and then com continuing up to two years or more in addition to having complementary, adequate complementary feeds added, foods added to that. Mm -hmm. And so what is the reason for most women stopping is because there's a lack of education, one, and two, there's a lack of support. So you'll see in line with this year's team, step up for breastfeeding, educate and support. We are looking at making sure that the public is aware that you don't need to stop breastfeeding. Women tend to stop breastfeeding when they have to return to work. And that's the reason we are advocating that employers join us in supporting women by providing an enabling environment. And you might ask, what is that? Simply just an area in the office where a woman could breastfeed, could express her milk and store it in privacy, not a toilet, not a closet, yes. not in a corridor. She shouldn't have to go out in her car to do it, you know. So we're asking employers to help us with supporting, just creating just one chair, a little fridge where they could they could put their pumps and, you know, the, the milk that is expressed would go a long way in helping women to continue breastfeeding. Now, that is at the workplace level, but I know the conversation had also started in the public area, right? Yes. Should a woman breastfeed in public? Um, is it something wrong? Should she cover her breast with a cloth? What are your thoughts on that? My thoughts on that, 
there's that we need to make sure that we get rid of the myths debunk some of the myths that goes with it and that societal pressure we don't see a lot of it here and thank god for that but we want to make sure that the public is aware the benefits are endless and so a woman should be allowed to breastfeed her child with dignity and respect wherever she is because that is what her baby needs to help the baby grow and develop properly and as we are talking about the line of benefits to baby the mothers are not left out and you know in terms of women we are very very concerned about the optics so one of the very first benefit <laughs> i want to mention is that breastfeeding would help the woman reduce and lose that baby fat we say baby fat yes. lose that baby size at a quicker rate than women who do not breastfeed but miss thomas in, in in that same vein i've heard the argument that maybe when you're breastfeeding it changes the size of the breast it changes the firmness of the breast and so that may also cause mothers to want to wean their baby off of the breast milk at an earlier age and that's why we're here to educate and support because Oh, a lot of those things are myths, right? And because in the past we did not have the kind of support to get to the public the information that they need on breastfeeding, the accurate information, the scientifically sung information, the relevant information, and that's what we're here for at the Ministry of Health, to ensure that these, the information that is put out there now is the information that can support women. Women must know, okay, this, I may, I may have heard that, but that is not, not necessarily true, right? So we, we, we want to look at the benefits that outweigh all of the myths that we normally hear. Women re have the reduced risk of non-communicable diseases, mm -hmm. diabetes, hypertension, cancer, the reduced risk of breast and ovarian. When they breastfeed. When you breastfeed, especially mm -hmm. in the long term. Mm -hmm. And you will hear me saying over and over, in the long term. Because we promote with as well as long as along with World Health Organization and UNICEF. We promote that babies should be exclusively breastfed in the first six months and then continuing up to two years and beyond. Now, Ms. Thomas, you are saying that, but I know that there are some grandmommies who want to put a piece of provision or want to put, make, make, make a little punch for baby when baby is less than six months old. I mean, do you encourage that? So, to reduce that risk and dealing with those things. We have produced this book. Yes, tell us about it. Breastfeeding and Beyond, right? As I said, we promote exclusively breastfeeding, exclusive breastfeeding for six months. No milk, no teas, no lime bud, right? The mothers could, could drink whatever, but in terms of the baby, that is what the baby should have. And so we experience a lot that women did not know how to transition from breastfeeding into complementary feeding. Mm -hmm. And so we took the time to produce in collaboration with the Pan American Health Organization, this beautiful book called Breastfeeding and Beyond. And in it, you will find chapters that would contain how to transition from exclusive, exclusive mm -hmm. to adding complementary foods, how, what those foods should contain, how you're going to mix the food, at what age, different ages and stages you're going to add things like meat and different, yes. different types of food, and how to measure, how to prepare. Because, you know, we, we grew up with this society and, and we always thought that we had to go to the supermarket and fill our carts with bottles of things when we could prepare it at home, our own local food, because we say that babies should have food from the family spot. And where can we get um, a copy of this book? This book is available on the Ministry of Health Directorate of Women's Health website and you can just you can just scan the QR code and it is available in soft copy. Women who attend any of the antenatal, antenatal clinic and even some of them attending their private doctors would be able to get this book. It is free of charge and you can see it is very pretty. <laughs> we did it in hardcover so that it would be a legacy that women could pass of on. Course. And it's also durable as well and just it in is case it gets quite, wet or anything quite like that. Durable. Yes, I appreciate quite durable. that. Nice. Right. Well, Ms. Thomas, I'll let's switch gears to the conference that's coming up. Tell us about the conference. All right, so back in line with the theme, 
step up for breastfeeding educate and support the Ministry of Health would be doing a conference in collaboration with the Pan American Health Organization. We will be having international speakers dealing with the topic of the international code and looking at the legal aspect. And you might ask why the legal aspect? The legal aspect has to deal with a lot of the um, advertising and promotion of infant formula and that there, there are regulations, right? The International Code for the Marketing of Breast Milk Substitute and the subsequent World Health Resolution speaks to how those things must be controlled, right? Because the first thing that a woman should really be hearing about is breastfeeding. Right, unless it is medically indicated, then you know that should be what she she hears about. So this conference this year, we have both local and international speakers, and so we'd be look the local speakers would be looking at the topic of supplementation, and what that is is usually um, sometimes people will say, well, you know, breast milk is not enough. I need to top up feed and all of that. So they would be looking at the medical indication. We have Dr. Marlon Timothy, our neonatologist, mm -hmm. and he will be dealing with that topic. And we also have our public health nutritionist, Ms. Denicia Venus. She will be giving us that whole um, have view as a nutritionist as to when and how or if a baby needs supplementation. So in the conference, are we only going to be experiencing lectures or will there be other activities as well? So the presenters will be doing lectures and then you will have time for question and answers and then we will evaluate the day at the end of it. Okay. And where can we go to get more information about the conference? It's taking place on August 2nd, is it? Yes, Nine. it is August 2nd. So you will find the information, the link, it, it is online. So the members of the public can gain access to it. It is online at the Ministry of Health website. And sometime in the near future, probably over the weekend, you'll find in the local newspapers, the link will be there for, for persons to access. Mm -hmm. Now, I appreciate the fact that you have the book, uh, Ms. Thomas, but I know that there are still some others who may want to do that complementary style breastfeeding within that crucial one to six month period yes. that you were talking about. What is the ministry doing to encourage mothers to breastfeed exclusively for that one to six month period of, of, of the baby's age? So the first, the first thing we need to do with that is education. And so at all of our antenatal clinics, the, you would find that the members of staff, the nurses there, would take the time to educate the mothers about breastfeeding. And you know, lately we had to deal with COVID and there was not a lot of face-to-face -face interaction. And so that's where the book again came in. And we also have brochures that we give. So we make sure that mothers leave with the information and even if they don't get it hard copy, they, they are the QR codes at all of the health centers that they can scan on their phone and, and take it with them. So that's the first part of call. The other thing we're doing is making sure that we educate the public in terms of support. You see that, 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 that um, issue of support, that goes a long way in helping a mother. That's the make or break where a mother would decide whether am I, am I going to continue breastfeeding or am I going to stop? if she would have the support and where that support should come from, it should come from us. It should come from members of the public. It should come from the employer in the workplace as well as the fellow colleagues in the workplace who would say, okay, we know you have to go and, and express. So, you know, that half an hour or so that a woman would need just to go and express, she could come back and do it. It shouldn't be taken out of her lunch hour or her break time. It should be slotted in. And so we want to make, again, I'm making that plea for, for employers to give that kind of support. Of course. And one of the things we didn't touch on was the national breastfeeding policy, because I see you have the book yes. there. Tell us about the, the, the national breastfeeding policy. Okay. So coming in into um, office, D this coordinating unit was only developed in 2018. And so we needed to guide the public as to, and health care professionals, 
how to do the practice of breastfeeding. And so we have developed a policy that guides really practice that says at each of our healthcare facility, this is what needs to be happening in terms of promoting, protecting, and supporting breastfeeding. This too is available on the Ministry of Health website, on the Directorate of Women's Health website, and it is available for all of the public to be able to see so we can say, okay, so I came for care and your policy states mm -hmm that I should have skin to skin when my baby is delivered. Okay. How come I'm not having it, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, policy guides practice. Okay, great. And of course, anything else you want to add, um, Ms. Thomas, about breastfeeding or even about the conference that we may have missed? Okay, so I want to again say that on the second, starting at eight o'clock, the conference would begin, right? Our very own Minister of Health would be our feature speaker that morning. And we are really looking forward to having the public join us. It would be very, very interesting. And we know that this is one way we can promote and educate the public and get the kind of support that mothers and babies need to continue breastfeeding. And final question, this uh, conference is for mummies, new mummies, expecting mummies, people who may be interested. Who is the target audience? It is for healthcare professionals, it is for mommies, it is for family members, it is especially those in the legal profession yeah. should take an opportunity because we would be looking at that. People involved in marketing and all of that, we are asking medical doctors, especially the OBS and gynae, um, crew and the pediatricians to join us. We want those people to have the information because a lot of times people get themselves in practice and they are not aware that they might be doing something that violates you know, the practice of breastfeeding. Of course. And the information is on the ministry's website, also on their social media pages as yes, well. Yes, it is. Nice. Well, Ms. Thomas, thank you so much for coming in and sharing about the, um, the national breastfeeding policy and, of course, how we can encourage mothers to breastfeed. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> it's my pleasure. Of course. And that was Ms. Deborah Thomas, who is the manager of the Breastfeeding Coordinating Unit at the Ministry of Health, just telling us about a breastfeeding conference that's coming up on August 2nd. Remember, you can go to the Ministry of Health's website and also their social media pages for more information. You're on the Now Morning Show. We're going to take a break and be right back. Stay with us.